Have you listened to Lang Lang's piano book yet? I got a copy when it was first released and I must admit I think the album's a great idea. Stay tuned and let me explain why. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves the piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. Lang Lang, love him or hate him, is a force of nature in the piano world. Clearly, I'm not going to start trying to review his playing. He can make a piano sing in ways I can only dream about. Rather, I'd like to review perhaps more the idea behind this album and why I think it's such a good buy. There are three main things that I think are so great about this album. The first is probably the choice of repertoire. 29 different pieces from a variety of genres, including ragtime, all around the ABRSM grades two to eight, something like that. Secondly, of course, hearing this accessible music played by such a fantastic pianist gives amazing insights into what can be hidden within the score that most of us simply just don't see. And then thirdly, even for people who aren't die-hard piano lovers, I think the choice of repertoire is great. It'll spark lots of memories of things we've heard all as children and also introduce people to some different things that are equally beautiful. When I first heard about the release of the album, I straight away went on to Idagio to see if it was there. Now, if you're not familiar with Idagio, I've put a link here of the video I did about classical music streaming services, which are extremely good and well worth checking out. This, of course, meant that I then got to listen to the album without having to buy it separately as it came as part of my subscription. I suppose in many ways, Piano Book could be described as a bit of a concept album, maybe. You know, most often, when you get a new album by a world-class pianist, it's there to showcase their virtuosity. That's what people are paying for. That's what we like to listen to. And therefore, a lot of the choice of repertoire will be extremely technical in nature, which... To be honest with you, aside we die-hard pianists, I think is a turn-off for a lot of people. Piano Book, on the other hand, features much more accessible music. And that's accessible, of course, both to the listener, but also accessible to the learner. Given that it's all, you know, up to grade 8 type standard, then whilst, OK, yes, grade 8 is definitely advanced, it's a level that a lot of us will be able to reach given the time and the practice. I personally find it quite refreshing to hear music that I think, oh, one day I'll be able to play that, as opposed to hearing lots of music that I know never in a month of Sundays will I probably ever get good enough to be able to master it properly. And equally, I'm sure that, especially maybe to a lot of younger pianists, it will motivate them in their practice hearing music that Lang Lang plays that they know is not that far away from their grasp. And maybe it'll make their practice sessions daily a bit less of a chore. Next, I think that hearing simpler music, given the virtuoso treatment, for want of a better expression, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, is also very insightful and a joy in itself. Often, hearing the world's best pianists play some simpler music is really relegated to their concert encores. I believe Andrew Schiff once played an ABRSM grade one piece as an encore in a concert. And one of my favourite recollections of an encore piece was Horowitz when he played Traumerei. You know, Traumerei is a piece that I'd learned myself and I thought I could play it quite okay. But when I heard him play it, I almost fell off the sofa. It was amazing. The detail that he found, that he pulled out, the dynamics that he used, clearly astounding. 
Of course, I didn't see this in concert, I saw this on an old VHS tape, but that did then give me the opportunity later to sit down with the music in front of me and listen to him play it again. And I would say for 90% or maybe more of what he played, there was nothing that he did that wasn't already indicated in those dots. Little subtle hints such as the direction of the stem on a note, the phrasing marks, all things that probably went largely over my head, but he pulled out every tiny nuance in just such an amazing way. To me, this is also what you get with Piano Book. Perhaps some would say Lang Lang takes more liberties than Horowitz would. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, I'm not really sure. But starting to see what's behind the score and how he can pull that out is a masterclass in itself. Whether or not you necessarily agree with all of those interpretive choices is a personal matter for you. But what I find fascinating is the fact that these are all choices that he's made as he plays this music. And Horowitz said quite famously that the score itself is just the start of playing a piece of music. What's more important is what's hidden behind those dots. And that when you play, you should never be afraid to dare. I'm a firm believer in accessibility when it comes to classical music. You know, we have to remember that many of us grew up in a day and age where any piece of music should last three minutes, four at the outside, anything more than that starts to become a bit of a challenge. Therefore, if you really want to introduce classical music to a new audience, and I think it's vital that we do, then you need to take this into consideration. No matter how beautiful a Mozart, a Beethoven or a Chopin sonata might be, to be honest, they're simply too long for most people. After three or four minutes, they'll start subconsciously to get bored and they'll be looking for other things to do. We have to remember that just because we can sit transfixed as Andrew Schiff plays the entire well-tempered clavier book one, most non-pianists just don't have the attention span for it. And this is where an album like Piano Book, I think, comes into its own, because it's more of the bite-sized chunks, for want of a better expression, of music that people are used to listening to. And therefore, if you're trying to introduce non-pianists to some piano music, then I think it's a very good place to start. In short, I do think that Piano Book is a worthwhile listen. It's one of these things that will appeal both to pianists and non-pianists alike. There's a good variety in the choice of music and a little bit of something for everybody. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.